Hi everyone. A very warm welcome to you from BIV's team. Today we are going to talk about advanced big data and Hadoop course. So as you know, big data is the new kid on the block and everybody is talking about big data nowadays. And in fact, it is a must to have a skill for people who are already working in a business intelligence, data warehousing or analytics domain. And this is also must to have a skill for the people who want to enter into data science domain whether they are fresh graduate or they are working into IT but into non-BI or non-data science domain. This course is good for managers, software architects, software developers, business analysts, testers and system uh, administrators. Basically anyone who is working into IT domain or uh, uh, BI domain uh, they, uh, and they want to switch their career to data science, this is the right course for them. And uh, when, when we start this uh, uh, batch or whenever we start a new class, we have this assumption, we assume that you do not know anything on big data. And with that assumption, we start uh, teaching uh, from basics and then we start uh, uh, teaching all, all uh, architecture part, all concepts of big data, then all concepts of Hadoop, then, then, uh, then uh, we uh, we, we uh, ask you to do a, uh, lab exercises on Hadoop and then you go ahead and do some projects on Hadoop. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, you become completely comfortable on not only on the architecture part, but also you start writing some programs on Hadoop. So why you should do this course or for that matter, anyone uh, should go for this course. So uh, as you can see on the slide that uh, there are a lot of job opportunities uh, available uh, in, in big data right now and as per a uh, report from McKinsey uh, in 2011 there was a shortage of uh, around 140,000 uh, to 190,000 people in uh, US alone uh, who have this uh, analytical talent and uh, there is a shortage of 1.5 million people who can analyze the data right and there's another research from winter women's uh, that uh, there, there was a 300 percent rise in the demand demand of data scientists and engineers after 2013 and uh, from another research we, we we have conducted in indian market there are around uh, 3000 published jobs on big data and hadoop in india and this statistic is on uh, 26th october and this is from nokri.com which is a leading job portal uh, in india so as you can see that there is a lot of job opportunities which are already there in the market and there are a lot of opportunities which are going to come up in uh, near future. So let's say that you are not a job seeker. Uh, so what are the other important uh, aspects of this course? So the, the most important aspect of this course is the learning. So especially if you belong to a BI domain, uh, that big data is going to touch you in, in a lot of ways uh, going forward. So there are uh, mostly two case, use cases coming up right now in uh, all the companies who have implemented uh, BI. So the number one is uh, that uh, uh, there are a lot of ETL uh, batch processing, there are a lot of other type of processing which are heavy and is uh, take a lot of time and companies are trying to optimize those uh, processing and now they are looking at big data uh, as an alternative to process that type of data. So uh, there's a lot of proof of concepts happening in uh, uh, multiple companies who have this uh, data warehousing infrastructure. So what they do, they're trying to uh, offload some of the processing uh, uh, to big data, to Hadoop and trying to uh, get the result and then uh, uh, input the, say, the result back to the uh, BI system. So there's a lot of uh, use cases are happening around that. Then another use case, uh, uh, the, the, that uh, not only BI companies but uh, non-BI companies or uh, you know uh, uh, teams who are working in BI or non-BI uh, they are uh, working on uh, on this is that they are trying to tap uh, the data which was uh, uh, earlier discarded so for example they had uh, a website log data which was uh, just stored for some time and then discarded uh, after some time and now they are thinking to tap that data, they are thinking to process that data by using big data technologies and uh, make uh, make a good use of this data which is already available. So there's a lot of companies who want to tap uh, uh, this type of data which was not used earlier. So let us move on to course curriculum. 
so we have divided this course broadly into two, uh, four sections and in, in section one we are going to talk about big data concepts what is big data and what is the architecture uh, uh, components of big data and we will talk about big data in general so that it will be uh, useful for anyone who is even not non technical they will be able to understand you know what is big data and why it is so useful in current uh, scenarios then in section 2 we'll be talking about hadoop and hadoop ecosystems concepts like what is hadoop and what are the different components what are the different tools uh, available under hadoop and uh, we will talk about them in detail then in section 3 we will take up some lab exercises so it will be something like you uh, start writing uh, hello world program in hadoop and then you start writing some uh, more complex programs and uh, there are around 12 exercises uh, uh, which you can do either on your system or when you uh, join a classroom course you can do in classroom then we move on and uh, in section 4 we do a uh, uh, few projects on Hadoop so uh, you will have an end to end uh, uh, knowledge about uh, how to execute how to design and execute a project on Hadoop So let us see what we are going to cover in big data concepts. So first we will talk about uh, why big data has become such a big challenge and why it is also a, uh, a big opportunity as well at the same time. So what, what, what happened, what is happening in, in, the, in, in the ecosystem, in the IT and why uh, data is becoming uh, uh, a problem or why big data is, we are not able to handle the new type of data and what are the reasons behind it and how it is becoming also becoming a source of new information which was not available earlier. So we will talk about what is big data and we will talk about uh, big data in detail. We will talk about how big data is evolved uh, from older technologies and uh, so that you will get a clear understanding of all uh, technologies associated with uh, big data and then we will also talk about uh, how this uh, uh, big data is different from RDBMS uh, system so so far RDBMS uh, are the most uh, uh, popular tools or most popular softwares uh, to collect and analyze or store uh, process the data but now big data is coming to the picture uh, with a special type of uh, database which are called NoSQL databases. So we will talk about uh, both of them together and find out what are the major differences. And then also we will talk about uh, how this uh, big data stream is different from analytics and business intelligence uh, stream and uh, so that there are a lot of confusion uh, regarding uh, these terms in market like uh, some people talk about BI, some people talk about data science, some people talk about analytics. Uh, and some people say uh, it is big data so there is a lot of confusion so we for once uh, once for all we are going to clear uh, this confusion so we will talk about uh, big data as it is happening in science and research as it is, uh, it is happening in government sectors as it is happening in uh, private sector so we will take up some use cases from private sector uh, for example and we'll talk about how, how uh, private companies are using this data for their uh, advantage. Then we will take some use cases for big data. Uh, so uh, uh, use cases like uh, website click stream data. Uh, we'll take a use case on uh, sentiment data. Uh, we'll talk about geolocation data, server data and machine data. So for example, uh, in geolocation data uh, use case, um, we will talk about how, how a company done an experiment in its, uh, uh, it's a retail company and they have a mall and what they have done is uh, they have asked all, all uh, people who are entering to mall to enable their Wi-Fi and they, they give uh, that Wi-Fi connection for free and based on Wi-Fi connections, based on the signals, uh, Wi-Fi signals, they could analyze that uh, you know where they, most of the people are going and based on that they have designed their mall. Uh, display systems. They have designed the store system, uh, store display systems. So they have used this data uh, to uh, uh, you know optimize their space uh, utilization, and uh, they had to use big data technology uh, to process uh, this enormous amount of data. So there there are use cases like this. There are other use cases, uh, uh, some other use cases which are like how uh, Facebook had 
this uh, problem of having huge volume of data and how they uh, solve this problem by using uh, big data technology and then we will talk about uh, uh, that how companies are using uh, big data to optimize their data warehouse how how companies are using uh, big data to get a 360 degree view of their customer so their customer might be uh, on social media uh, on uh, uh, on doing things on internet so uh, they can now analyze all that data for, for, for that customer and they will know that uh, you know their what their customers are actually doing okay and there is a new uh, technology coming up which is called internet of things so uh, how uh, internet of things data is getting captured and processed by big data and how big data is used to manage information security data then we will talk about uh, big data in cloud and in that we are going to talk about uh, what are the different uh, cloud delivery models like we have a model uh, where uh, software is provided as services uh, there is a model where a platform is uh, provided as a services so we, we are going to talk about all those uh, delivery models and then we will talk about uh, about the companies who, who are providing big data processing power by using clouds so one such company is Amazon uh, who have uh, this entire big data processing infrastructure and you can uh, buy that on cloud and you can run your big data processing on their cloud. So we are going to talk about major uh, uh, infrastructure provider uh, where you can go and deploy your big data and process that. Then we are going to talk about the big data architecture and some core components or core uh, concepts or theorem about big data and uh, so one, one such uh, theorem is uh, called CAP theorem uh, which is basically uh, to deal with distributed systems and how we, we uh, design distributed systems and uh, if you know about relational database management systems there we follow a particular uh, property which is called ACID property uh, but in, in uh, distributed systems we relax some of those properties like you know we do not want uh, data to be uh, available all the time for example and uh, this theorem will cover that part another important uh, concept is map reduce so which is uh, something like a core core of the Hadoop system basically and uh, in that we are going to talk about how we break a problem into multiple components and how we run those components in parallel and then bring them back and create the uh, create a unified solution so that will be a map reduce architecture we are also going to cover a layered approach for big data which is called a smack uh, layer in that uh, we have a, a storage layer and map reduce layer and query layer and there are a lot of new uh, components lot of new tools so open source softwares which are coming up uh, into smack uh, layer we will talk about those uh, components and tools so next we will take up hadoop and hadoop ecosystem in this section we will talk about Hadoop so what is Hadoop how it got its name we will talk about little bit of uh, its uh, history we will take up the Hadoop ecosystem and we will talk about uh, various components like SDFS, Hive, Pig, Uzi, Scoop, Plume and uh, you know we will talk uh, we will give a brief introduction about all these components so then we will talk about how Clouded and Hortonworks is helping uh, Hadoop community and how they are making life easy for uh, Hadoop developers um, and these uh, two companies they have provided uh, their uh, graphical user interface on top of uh, uh, Hadoop layer and uh, you know and uh, you can um, uh, in fact they have provided some download sandbo sandboxes as well so you can uh, download that and you can start working on that then we will talk about some uh, data science tool which are not part of Hadoop uh, but uh, they are open source they are from Apache and uh, we will talk about them briefly like uh, tools like uh, Scala, Spark, Storm and Mahavat uh, we will talk about them uh, then we will talk about Hadoop architecture so what are the different components under Hadoop and how they are coordinating with each other how uh, this entire Hadoop system is running together then we will take up cluster architecture so if you want to deploy Hadoop in a cluster you have multiple nodes and you want to run those nodes in parallel 
so how to how to do uh, that setup how to run it how to ma maintain and manage uh, this type of cluster then we will take each hadoop component and explain them one by one so we will begin with hdfs so what is hdfs how it is designed what is the block uh, what is what is name node what is data node how is the queued commands on hdfs and, and about uh, hadoop file system and we will talk about some commands which we can go and execute on hdfs and how to set up a hadoop cluster so how uh, how to define a cluster specification how to do set, set up an installation how to do hadoop configuration what are the security uh, features available then we will talk about data loading techniques so two such techniques are flume and scoop and flume is used to load big amount of log data into hadoop and scoop is uh, used to load data from relational database management system and you can do uh, both you can uh, load data from rdbms to hadoop or you can load data from hadoop uh, back to rdbms uh, using scoop so in this section we will we'll talk about advanced map reduce so how to uh, create a map reduce application how to do configuration how to test it how to run it locally and how to deploy it on uh, cluster and uh, the most important is how to uh, decompose a problem into map reduce jobs then we will talk about uh, the working of a uh, map reduce that uh, we will talk about jobs like how to submit the jobs how, and what are the different uh, status of the jobs how the jobs is initialized how how uh, it is uh, executed how how you know that the job is completed and if there is a failure in the job how to track that how to schedule the job for batch processing so we will cover other, other map reduce topics like uh, types and formats map reduce features in this section we will take up pig and pig latin so uh, pig latin is a script which you can write on top of a dfs system and uh, you can execute your uh, uh, task you can you can create map reduce task and you can execute but uh, by using pig latin scripts so we will be talking about uh, uh, installation and how to run the pig how to and uh, define the user functions how how different uh, data processing operation can be done on uh, pig and uh, we will talk about uh, uh, some architectural component of it like uh, how the parallelism is supported how the uh, how how can we compare it with the uh, relational database management systems in this section we will talk about hive and hive ql so hive is a, a, a sql like a layer on top of hdfs so uh, uh, you, if you compare it, uh, it with pig pig is a, a script a language where you have to write all your operations but hive uh, is something where you can write a sql like a statement and internally it will be converted to map reduce jobs so you do not have to write map reduce jobs you just have to write a sql uh, like query and it will be converted and will be uh, executed as map reduce jobs so we will talk about hive architecture we will talk about uh, how to install how to run it uh, how how to do uh, various data processing how to create a table uh, using hive uh, which will be on uh, hive uh, 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 platform how to query the data how to define uh, various user functions and then we, we will also cover compare this with uh, traditional databases in this section we will talk about edge base so edge base is a no sql database which is uh, again on top of sdf uh, system and we will talk about architecture how the installation uh, is done uh, the other client components we will uh, compare it uh, with uh, rdbms in this section we, we will talk about uh, zookeeper so what is zookeeper zookeeper is a centralized service which take care of all the configuration and all uh, uh, you know common details about the uh, entire hadoop ecosystem uh, and uh, you know how it it uh, it uh, manages to do it how 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 are the different uh, components of zookeeper how to install and run uh, zookeeper what are the various operations of zookeeper we will talk about all those uh, things in uh, this section 
in this section we will discuss uh, the uzi uh, uzi is basically a workflow system uh, where you can uh, uh, keep all your jobs in a workflow like uh, structure and you can execute them you, you can schedule them so how to uh, create a workflow how to deploy it how to run it we'll talk about all those things in uh, uh, in this section So MapReduce has gone a complete overhaul in uh, in new Hadoop uh, version, and now we have what we call at MapReduce version two or YAN, and so we will talk about YAN and that uh, how how it, uh, it has changed that uh, earlier MapReduce uh, mechanism and how uh, there is a, uh, a global resource manager, how there is an application manager who is now handling the tasks uh, in Hadoop. So since Hadoop is an open source tool, there is a lot of integration is happening from Hadoop to other open source tools, and uh, in this case, we will talk about uh, uh, integration of Hadoop with an uh, open source BI tool, uh, which is called Pentaho. In similar fashion, we will talk about uh, how to integrate uh, Hadoop with R. R is an analytics uh, software. In this section, we'll uh, talk about best practices of big data. So, uh, in case you're planning to uh, start in a big data application, so what are the things you need to take care? What are the best practices you have to follow? So, in last few sections, we have seen the concepts of Hadoop and big data, and now uh, now is the time to start writing some programs on Hadoop. And uh, so, there are some good exercises where you can go and write uh, programs. In lab one, we will do the installation of Hadoop. We will uh, install some other required software like VMware, uh, Putty, FileZilla, and other softwares. And then we will uh, do some uh, setup exercises on Hadoop, like you know how to start a virtual machine, how to start a Hadoop, how to check if uh, Hadoop is uh, running properly or not. In lab two, we will work on SDFS. So we will uh, run some commands on SDFS. We will upload a file on SDFS. And we will see how to uh, load and how to see the data on SDFS. In lab three, we will we will use some other uh, uh, means to load the data on SDFS. So in this uh, lab, uh, we, we are going to use Scoop to load data from database to SDFS, and also we uh, we will uh, export data from SDFS back to uh, a database by using Scoop. In lab four, we will. Uh, set up and run a MapReduce job. So you will see how uh, a MapReduce job is working on Hadoop uh, infrastructure. Uh, in this lab, you will be able to uh, actually create and run the, uh, that job yourself. In lab five, uh, we will uh, make you comfortable on uh, Pig and Pig Latin. So you will uh, be able to execute some basic Pig commands. You should be able to load data into into a relation. Uh, which is a, a typical uh, layout uh, for storing data on uh, on SDFS, and then you can uh, you'll be able to run uh, many uh, pig scripts. You'll be able to define a schema. You'll be able to uh, run uh, some operations like uh, group by for each uh, by using uh, uh, pig scripts. And you will also have some advanced programming uh, hands-on, like how to define parameters, how to do a flatten exercise, how to do uh, inner join, join, auto join by using, uh, by creating a scripts uh, for for this. Uh, we'll have some extra uh, uh, lab exercises on pig, like you know how to split uh, the data set, how to join it, and uh, we will also uh, know how to uh, prepare the data for hive. Then we go on and uh, have some case studies, uh, small case studies or small projects on pig, like if you want to analyze a uh, website log data how to do it by uh, using pig scripts so the, uh, similarly there is another case study like you know if you want to uh, analyze the stock market data how you can do it by using pig in lab 6 we will uh, cover the hive uh, um, processing so in that you will be able to create hive tables and you can you can store data from a file you can create partition you will be able to uh, query this uh, data source uh, in a similar way that you uh, query any uh, rdbms database and then you will be able to write multiple hive queries and uh, you will be completely comfortable with writing hive queries and accessing data by using hive 
so we will have some small case study uh, on how something like you know you want to uh, compute n gram uh, how you can do it uh, how basically uh, you will be able to uh, uh, become comfortable on writing a sql query any type of sql queries and you can you'll be able to know what are the various uh, keywords in hive which you, you can use uh, for your purpose again in this lab we will know how to join do test do uh, data sets in hive in lab 9 we'll move on to edge catalog so we will see how to write an uh, edge catalog program uh, by using pig so basically edge catalog uh, can be connected to a pig and hive so you can uh, use this this is more convenient than pig and hive we we will do some advanced hive programming so we will uh, run some advanced feature of hive like views and windows functions so this is lab 10 in lab 11 we will run a uh, yarn application so we will execute uh, and distribute the shell uh, yarn applica application so we have to see uh, what are the different co configuration required what are the different components involved uh, in a uh, yarn application and we will have it uh, hands on on this in lab 12 we will work on uh, uji workflow and so what we will do we will define a workflow uh, uh, we will have some jobs in uh, uh, Hadoop and we will uh, uh, you know combine them and we will find uh, create a uh, workflow on Uzi and then we will uh, define it and schedule it and then we will finally run it on uh, Hadoop so after completing lab exercises successfully we will move on to the uh, projects so we will take up two projects from real life uh, domain so project one is to collect, refine and analyze the sentiment data and uh, we will uh, get this data from Twitter and we will try to uh, process it with using Hadoop and we will find out some interesting statistics about this data. Then we will take uh, website click stream data, uh, we will uh, process it with using Hadoop and then we will also uh, again find out some interesting statistics about this data like uh, you know this data is uh, collected on uh, website logs and we will find out how much time a user is spending on on the website so basically whatever analytics uh, uh, we call it a web analytics so that type of analytics we will do on this uh, in this data so this is the project too so this was a brief overview of our big data and hadoop course in case if you have any question you can call us or you can email us you can also see our website we have published all all these details and other details as well and hope uh, you like this uh, overview have a great day thanks a lot